Hey, hey guys, Kathy Richards, RD, hopping on. So I wanted to hop on today and chat a little bit about kind of the conversations I've been having this week with clients, the conversations that I've been having with other healthcare providers or those clients have been having with other healthcare providers. So interestingly enough, and via text, I was having a conversation with someone who... Um, wants to support their child in having a healthy weight. So for them, they see their child as living in a bigger body that makes them feel uncomfortable and they think that they need to have weight loss. But they're not going to listen to me when I say we don't promote weight loss in kids off the table. They're not going to hear that. So I came back in a way that supported how they were trying to support the child and then when I have that child in my care, I'll have to work with them on respecting their body. Because what we do is if we start to restrict kids eating, especially when we know that weight, there's so many other factors. There's stress, there's sleep, there's food intake, there's genetics. Like weight isn't calories in, calories out. And if someone is still telling you that, I'm sorry. So the relationship that a child builds with eating and food, it stays with them for the rest of their life. So we don't want to screw it up. Um, and we don't want to make them feel wrong and have this shame in their body because of their weight, right? So I've been listening to a book, um, or sorry, reading on Kindle and then listening to some guided meditations. It was so good on Kindle that I had to buy the hard copy. So I know it's backwards. Tell yourself a better lie. So it talks about rapid transformational therapy um, and how it's a technique using hypnosis that really gives people like faster um, shifts in mindset and things versus traditional talk therapy. So I shared a YouTube video um, where Marissa Peer, Peer was being interviewed in, I think it's a woman's talk um, series that I follow. But I shared that with one of my clients who isn't focused on weight loss per se, but has disordered eating and has a long history. And we're working on building up um, her food intake, her improving and healing that relationship with her body. And I wanted to share what she said. You know, she a couple like key takeaways she got just from listening to that little video was that she deserves to eat and that her restrictive eating is serving a purpose and maybe she doesn't need it to serve that purpose. It's serving the purpose of making her feel small, making her not kind of rock the boat. So she's at a point where she's just starting to recognize maybe this isn't serving me anymore. Maybe I can shift that. So that's one end of the spectrum I've been on this week. So talking with the people about kids and weight gain and the body's stress response, talking with a client that's been restrictive eating for a long time, had the opportunity to fall back into that this week, which is fine. I said, don't make yourself wrong. And we focus more on all the positive ways they're supporting their body and the self-awareness that they have now around like, gee, I don't feel good. I think I need to eat something and allowing themselves to eat something, even if it didn't fall on their food list. And then we go to the other extreme. So that's why I thought it'd be interesting to hop on. This is Wednesday, right? So I'm halfway through the week. The other extreme where I saw a patient yesterday who had lost um, 30, let's say 30 pounds in the last five months, taking a medication that helps cut appetite. Okay, so... I have to say I made an assumption before I hopped on the call because I saw that they had been seen by a doctor at a weight management clinic at the local hospital where I live. So I hopped on thinking like he's going to go into that weight management program, he's going to use the shakes and, and he's well on his way. So I actually thought maybe that would be our last call and he would go over to that program. But the interesting thing was his main concern and kudos to him was that like I don't feel hungry. I feel full, like, you know, I was trying to eat like we spoke about, trying to support my body with nutrition, you know, one bite in my oatmeal, I'd be like, I don't want this. So he's at a point where he's eating maybe one meal a day. Yesterday, I spoke with him at 3.30. He'd had a bagel by that point. 
So his concern was, am I getting the nutrients that I need? And that was great to see that he had that concern. So he brought that to this medical doctor whose focus is on weight loss. And he brought his concerns to him. And he said, it's great. It's great that you have no appetite. The medication is working. Your ideal candidate to go through our program, take these meal shakes, continue on your weight loss journey. But that didn't answer his question, right? Because he wants to enjoy food and he wants to also know that he's supporting his body nutritionally. So if we lose weight on a severe caloric restriction, often our body will also break down some of its protein stores to get energy, right? So then we lose muscle mass too. So I worked with him in a capacity yesterday of focusing on balancing nutrient intake by using meal replacement drinks or uh, balance like protein powder intake and using that through the day to make sure he's getting adequate protein and also getting adequate nutrient intake because that doctor was just focused on you're losing weight. So then I took the question to another provider who maybe ordered that weight loss medication. We, we use a lot in the one clinic I work in. And also said, my question to them was, do we, have we been reducing any, anyone's dose? Because I had another client that had an adverse uh, taste reaction, but they decided not to reduce their dose. So that provider, I really respect their opinion. I've worked with them for years. They're great at what they do in supporting patients. Um, they came back and said, well, it's working. They're getting the weight loss. That's how it's supposed to work, by not making them hungry. But the patient's not eating, and he wants to eat. He wants to enjoy food, and he also knows he's not getting what he needs. So we'll see how it goes. I reached out to him to talk about protein and adequate nutrient intake to support his body. But if you want to know why I'm not focused on weight loss with my clients, I had another client um, last week who said, I really appreciated your approach during our first session, which was on behavior change, behaviors that I can incorporate versus restrictive eating. And do you know why that is? It's because restrictive eating just sets us up to go off of it, right? People lose weight and then they regain it. So my focus is not on weight loss. My focus is on health at every size, taking my patients, the clients I work with, helping them incorporate these healthy behaviors that support them, that support them having energy, great sleep, um, being able to be active, that support their body in losing weight if that's what their body wants to do or gaining weight if that's where the body feels more comfortable, right? So the research is there that people can lose weight, but we often regain it. So health at every size. So if you want to look at the science, and it's not new. These books were published. It's just like intuitive eating, right? It's not new. Um, I'm just going to look at when this book was published. Hmm. Um, the copy that I have was... I'm not seeing it right now, but it's not new. We know it doesn't work. We know genetically some people aren't destined to be thin. It doesn't matter what body people live in. The health behaviors can still give them, you know, blood sugar control, energy, sleep, being able to be active and present for their family. Sure, there's lots of health behaviors we can put in to help with things. So today I also helped somebody else um, focus on adding in specific fibers to support their cholesterol status and help lower that. But I actually asked them to eat more food too because they were in a restrictive mode. If we restrict, then we come back and we want the food. So it's just funny because my pendulum in my work just swings these extreme ways but my overall focus is what supports the client and focusing just on weight loss that does not support anyone. I mean, we can all not eat for, you know, a few days and lose some weight. Is that healthy? No. Is that going to last long term? No. Right. So, so yeah, I just wanted to hop on. I just was finding it kind of interesting how the pendulum just swings on the, 
um, referrals I'm getting, the assessments that I'm um, doing and the clients I'm working with, but it can all tie back into that intuitive eating and really listening to our body. So even the client that's working through disordered eating, I said kudos to you. Like you've got the awareness that you didn't feel well, you needed to have some carbohydrate to help your head and get rid of your headache potentially. And we focused on that versus focused on the all the meals that she did skip because she had um, that time to do it because her her person living with her is gone. So that's just to say weight loss doesn't have to be the goal. We also want to look at how healthy we feel. And that's where intuitive eating is focused on supporting your body the best way that we can. And also, you know, supporting your nutrition. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you soon.